Hey guys, welcome back. It's Friday morning. We have Karen with us. Yep. And um, so if you want to call in, here's the number, 866-561-4292. And anything that we say is not meant to diagnose you. It's just meant to give you general information to do your own research with the help of your medical doctor. Uh, we're just going to just give you that type of information. Um, so Karen, uh, yeah. Do we have anything new going on? New developments? New things at the Berg household? <gasps> yes. We what? have a baby. Yay! Yeah, we finally had another baby. <laughs> I had a baby. No, we had a grandbaby. It's just weird that we're grandparents. I know. It's a little I mean, weird. like, I just can't. I all can't, my friends are. All my friends are grandparents. I can't relate to that. I had to. I had to. That's because you hang out with older people, like ninety. <laughs> God. No, so, but she's perfect. Lucy. Lucy. Took, Lois, how long did it take to yeah. pump that baby out? Oh my gosh, Jordy half was hour? amazing. It was an hour and a half. She was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. And what's incredible Lucy? Placenta. What's Lucy? What's Lucy's middle name? Lois May. Wow. It's my mom, and her grandma's middle name. So we'll we'll bring her by the studio. We'll we'll do a video. I'll do a video on Lucy as soon as she, I could, you know, smuggle give her, her give her a week. <laughs> grow up. And teach she's her how to walk. Incredible, and she's perfect. Yeah, she's cute. Yeah. Good. So, yeah. um, you know what? We're gonna go right to uh, Nitty from California. Okay. Hey, Nitty, are you are you there? Do you have a question? Hi, Doctor Berg. How are you? Great. Thanks. What's um, your question? Congratulations for the baby. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. And uh, congratulations to you too, Mr. Berg. Thank for you. the baby and the family. Thank you. Okay. Um, you're most welcome. Uh, my question this morning is uh, that my mom, uh, actually I'm calling for her, she's 69 years old, and uh, she's a diabetic, and in June she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Since then, she has been following a ketogenic diet with 20 hours of fasting and four hours window of eating. Now she's off all her medications for diabetes, high blood pressure, and thyroid. And uh, she's uh, showing significant improvement. Uh, she gets in her veggies along with um, her supplements, like nutrition, sweet breast powder, sea kelp, and apple cider vinegar every single day. She's very diligent about the things uh, that she's doing. Um, but we also got a blood work done. And while uh, her numbers on her HbA1c and thyroid and kidney function came out really good, but her cholesterol level and HDL and LDL were all high. Mm -hmm. And when I did uh, some research, I found out that because uh, she does not have a gallbladder, so her mm -hmm. body's not being able to maybe remove uh, excess fat from the body uh, as well as it should be. So I understood by watching her videos that she needs to be on the gallbladder support formula. My question this morning is, does she only need the gallbladder support formula or it needs to be combined with some other supplement too to okay. um, bring those, improve those numbers. All right, so good question. This is the common question that comes up all the time, and I want to just tell people, um, if your LDL, so-called bad cholesterol, goes up when you're doing keto, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It is not necessarily a bad thing. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, because you're switching your body to fat burning. You're going to be burning fat as fuel fatty acids, ketones, and guess what? Triglycerides, for example, that's all the stuff that's stored in the fat cell that's gonna now be used for energy. So you're gonna see um, your cholesterol go up sometimes, you're gonna see your triglyceride may come up, it's probably gonna come down because you're gonna use that for energy unless you're sitting around all day doing nothing. Um, but the thing is like LDL um, is not just something that clogs your arteries. We need the LDL to transport the cholesterol to help heal the body, heal, uh, provide for the um, antioxidant transportation, uh, provide to neutralize uh, pathogens, supply cholesterol to the cellular membranes. So there's a lot of purposes for this and when you switch it might go up temporarily and then it, it comes down. Um, I, I would um, watch my videos on cholesterol. We're going to be releasing some new ones as well because it's a very important topic. Now your mom doesn't have a gallbladder, so of course we want to make sure the vegetables are high. I'm going to recommend, um, in addition to the gallbladder formula to supply the bile, 
I would recommend uh, the digestion formula. It's called digest formula because that's going to acidify the stomach and that works really good to help increase the release of bile from the liver so we actually can kill two birds with one stone because we need that uh, strong pH to help everything work. Um, then the other thing too I think that would be good would be the um, for the immune system, sea kelp, uh, because that has a high quality iodine which is really, really good to help balance estrogen and other things and um, it's good for the immune system and to protect her. So that's what I would recommend. Um, so thanks for your call. All right, so Karen, wh where do we have people calling from or, uh, or commenting from social okay. media wise? I'm not even done with the list, but we have Texas, Egypt, Indiana, Africa, South Africa, Florida, Washington, D.C., Kentucky, Vegas, Seattle, Sweden, Dallas, Brazil, Hungary, Pakistan, the Philippines, Greece, wow. That's California. Awesome. I mean, it's, it's incredible. the list is it's worldwide. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. Hey, what about kimchi in the diet? Kimchi? It's one of the best things that you can consume. Um, not only is it, it is a probiotic, it's a prebiotic. Do you know the difference? One comes before and one <laughs> is in favor of. All right, so you absolutely do not know. You haven't been watching my videos? <laughs> I have 3,500. No, I know that we actually covered this last week and I, it's not that we I We covered this at the dinner table every night. I wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention. I just, there's you, so many applications on the desktop, you know what I mean? In the mental desktop. Okay, so let me explain. Yeah. A probiotic is like the friendly bacteria in your gut. Okay, that's all, when you ferment uh, cabbage, you can make this, chim it's actually bok choy, and you can make this kimchi, okay? okay. So you have the probiotic, that's mm -hmm. the friendly bacteria. Okay. But the fiber feeds the microbes, it's called a prebiotic. So you get the fiber. I think that's pretty much what I said. Oh yeah, I, I think you did. Right. Yeah, so we got that, and then of course that and sauerkraut, those two are just awesome. But yeah, kimchi, um, actually it's good for weight loss because if you don't have enough microbes, you gain more weight. That's why antibiotics will increase your weight gain because you know, it kills off the microbes. I should do uh, a video on making sauerkraut. It is the easiest thing in the world and it is so good. Oh yeah, why don't you do that? I know, Next week. I need to do that. Make I'll do mental that. note, Karen. I'll mental put it, note. <laughs> the application on the desktop. You need to clear out some of the old applications and reboot. It's true. Control, delete. <laughs> You're one Let's to clean talk. out the ears. <laughs> do you remember that time in San Diego where we, um, I was kind of getting involved in all sorts of very interesting projects and experiments. We did the ear candling, ear wax candling. Oh my gosh. And I got my parents to do it. I think I got your mom to do it. Yes. So we actually I have stuck photos. this candle. You know what? I should find that the photo ear, of you. And you suck out the wax. And show it. Well, that's the theory. It explains a lot. That's the theory. I should dig that photo out and post it for you guys because it's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm like, what? Is all, all this wax came out of my. No, it came out of the candle. Okay, that could be. It's a wax. Yeah, I still can't figure it out. It's yeah. a gimmick, I think. Well, I okay. think we should salvage that question. candle and make a, um, actually make a candle out of the wax. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we're going to go to Patsy. Hey, Patsy, you had a question. You're from North Carolina. Yes. Uh, I'm 69 years old, and six months ago I was diagnosed with colon cancer. I had the surgery, uh, lost about half my intestines, half my colon, but it turned out that I didn't have um, anything in the lymph nodes, so didn't have to go on chemo. I've been ke uh, doing keto for two weeks. I'm down nine pounds. Wow. I just wondered how that was going to affect me. And also, my husband started having Tourette-like symptoms. It's not Tourette's. He's 71 years old. But it, it's similar to that, totally uncontrolled. And he spent a lot of time in the hospital uh, trying to find out what it was. And they are just, they don't know, they have no idea. And somebody put me on to you. I started studying behind you, and I sat him down, and I said, Honey, can we just try this for a couple of months, and let's just see. He's been doing it a week and a half. The, the symptoms are not gone, but they are so diminished and so, few, so much fewer. But the problem is he's on Coumadin. Mm -hmm. and he had a major blood clot, and, and so he's on Coumadin, and the green leafy of naturally has brought down his INRs, and so I ordered the, um, the wheat 
grass powder. I ordered electrolyte. I was wondering if that would help to be able to not have to have so much mm. green leafy in his diet. Okay, good question. The reason why it's working, Patsy, is because you're you're really stabilizing blood sugars and when you actually switch the body to ketones, all sorts of neurological stuff, brain stuff clears up. And you just have to try to see yourself. But here, here's the thing. Um, I will say that the wheatgrass juice powder does have um, a good amount of vitamin K and Kumatin, you're trying to avoid vitamin K. However, I did a video on this. Uh, you can see, if you type Dr. Berg and Kumatin, I have a whole series of um, foods that he should be eating in place of the dark leafy greens. He should be doing squash, um, zucchini. Um, I, I list a whole bunch of vegetables. Um, so that's what he could do, and then he'll be fine that way. And you don't, like, I think a cabbage would be one thing he can do. It's low vitamin K. And um, so he can still get the results. He just can't have certain vegetables. So maybe you take the wheatgrass juice and then work with the doctor to get the right vitamin uh, K amounts. But that's awesome that you got these results because that's um, doing the exact right thing. And um, again, for, for your history, I think the best thing too is all, for both of you to, to really start sticking in there intermittent fasting with your keto. You're probably already doing it, but well done. All right, good job, Patsy. Okay, now we're gonna go to a question from social media. Okay, good. So. How can you handle lipomas? Lipomas are, um, it's kind of a fatty tumor that lives right below the skin. Um, it's related to liver. Um, they don't really know exactly what causes it. And I've not been successful uh, nutrition-wise to get rid of them. I think they're just so benign or like, they're not dangerous. They just sit there and they just do nothing. And they're this little bulge. So um, I think after you get your body healthier in the liver and you know, I'm not opposed to get them surgically removed because um, it's, a, it's a very minor procedure. You're not put out. It's a local thing. They pull it out, stitch you up, boom, you're good. So um, I don't have a solution to get rid of them in an alternative way. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so Monica from Denmark is asking, why is her blood pressure higher in the morning? Well, I think in the morning what happens is that uh, you do get a spike of cortisol. You have this, you know what a circadian rhythm is? Uh, vaguely. Hormones travel on a, a clock. It's a timing mechanism. You have something in your brain that actually literally is a clock. Did you know that? You have a quad clock in your brain? <laughs> That's good. Okay. And it's called the suprachiasmic nuclei. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> So the little guy, little clock in there, um, basically regulates all these different patterns of hormones. So you get this spike of cortisol at eight o'clock in the morning. Cortisol is a stress hormone, so if the adrenals are a little off, you could spike that and then increase the blood pressure temporarily. So what I would do, if I were you, is I would take a little electrolyte powder with a whole bunch of potassium, um, probably right when you wake up, and see if that doesn't help. Okay, and then if that doesn't help, then focus more on the adrenal body type in this book right here, because I show you how to tweak uh, the adrenal. It shows you how to get rid of stress. Hey, before we go to the call, I, I want to ask you, what's coming up later in this show, Dr. Berg? Well, that's a really good question, Karen. I'm so glad you asked. In fact, let's ask, so let's ask the viewers right now, because I have uh, three questions throughout this this hour show. Okay. And these are incredible questions to see Our if you guys can get smart. them correct. Okay? I'm sure they will. So here's the first question. You ready for this, Karen? Are yeah. you sitting down? <laughs> what vitamin deficiency causes sway back? Now you're probably saying, what is sway back, right? What is sway back? Sway back is where your low back arch is the exaggerated. So you're, you're sticking your butt out and your stomach your in. Out. So you have an excessively inward curve in your lower back. You ever okay. see people like that? I, I have. Okay. So what vitamin deficiency will cause that? Now, don't look it up, guys. Okay? Just type in what you Put think. Put on your thinking caps. What nutrient no deficiency Googling. will cause this, and then let us know. Well, I think that's amazing because it would never dawn on me that a nutritional deficiency caused that. Really? You just thought it was weak, weak muscles? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I recall seeing it even recently. You know? See, I know you were just dying to find out. What is the nutrient deficiency that's causing his sway back over there? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's what's going through your mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, good. So we're going to go to Maria. She's from Tennessee. She had a question about Bulletproof Coffee. Go ahead. Um, hi, how are you? Hi, Thank good. you so much. You guys are great. Um, I went on keto for a little bit more than three months, lost 27 pounds already. Wow. Um, I love it. And I mean, I started, I was really strict in the beginning, uh, doing, uh, uh, 16, mostly 20 hour fasting and mm -hmm. drinking the coffee, mm -hmm. um, with my job, I would drink around six and then have a meal later and that's 6 PM by the way. Okay. and have a meal around 8.30. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, you know, doing that every day. And I just, I, I seen some videos saying, you know, um, don't eat too much fat because then it's good for you to stop it. And then uh, you're, you, you use your own, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just um, wondering what you think about that. And should I just, like, do it? every once in a while mm -hmm. and I do have kids I want to start them on it but you know they're too addicted to the sugars and and the Cheetos and I was wondering if that was also good for them got it your kids you mean yeah yeah depends how young they are as far as the coffee part maybe you do some type of um, you can do Ticino that's it's a kind of an herbal coffee but here's the thing with the Bulletproof, okay? So you're adding MCT oil and butter and you're blending it in your coffee. It's really good for people to start out with that. But if you are plateaued, if your metabolism is slow, if you find that you wanna lose more weight, then you wanna back off from that once your body gets used to it. Because then we can force your body to live off your own fat and not the fat in that coffee. So that's really the point. It's, do I recommend it? It really depends what you're trying to do. Uh, if you're not trying to lose weight, Go for it. Some people do it and they still lose weight. So, but it's a good tool to use to go from all, all the way in the morning to skip your breakfast. So as far as kids, you can do a, um, if they have a fast metabolism, I would just use Ticino, which is no caffeine, and you could stick the, the, um, those two uh, fats in there and blend it up, and they're gonna be good to go. Good question. So, um, so Karen, I, um, probably released this morning probably the one of the most the fastest viral growing videos that I ever released. Do you know the title of it? No. You're gonna find out. <laughs> it's um <laughs> don't watch this now guys, but it's what to No, eat. Steve you tell them they're all gonna go. Okay. Don't go. You can note this down for later. I might have to tell them now. Now you have to tell them. Alright. Pinky swear, ready everybody? Swear. Right. Now if I remember the title of it. Um, how to eat whatever you want and still lose your belly fat. Now, I know some of you are going, that is total clickbait. Uh, yes, it is, but it has <laughs> really good content. Really good content. There is some and, truth to it. And this video, I, mean. I wanted to create this for the professional procrastinator. Slacker. The professional, the person who is so lazy they're not going to go on the keto because they're too lazy. It. It's in their genes. I don't so, want to change it. It reminds me of when we had a, a center, a treatment center, and people would come in, and you'd get the guy who's like, look, I want to lose weight. But I want to change my diet. But I don't want to change my diet, and I don't want to have to exercise. If so I, I want you to fix me and give me something, but I don't want to have to change my diet. I don't want to have to stop drinking every night of the week. Now, back then, I didn't have a solution, but now I do. Right. So when we're done here, go to the video, watch it, and then spread it because it's, uh, it's, it's effective for those lazy procrastinators. <laughs> if you feel like you're a Not slug. Not for you. No. Because you're no. watching this. Yeah. And you don't need that. That's but right. But if you know someone who's That's like right. that, who's like, I'm not going to change. It's too hard. I need to go to Shantae. Okay. From Houston, Texas. Great. Had a question about acid reflux. Go ahead. Hello, Dr. Berg. How are you doing? Hi, great. Thanks. Um, it, the acid reflux, or I, I just had a endoscopy and a colonoscopy done not too long ago, where they looked inside and they said, oh, yeah, you have uh, esophagitis. Mm -hmm. You have a reflux esophagitis. You have a, high, a small hyena heart hiatal hernia and you have gastritis mm -hmm. and so they just gave me some paperwork and said hey you know just get on this bland diet and 
stay away from these, you know, spicy foods and, and do these things and you'll be fine and see you in five years and we'll, we'll do another one of these. Yeah. Um, they never really gave me mm-hmm. an underlining reasoning for why I have this. Right. Now, I've been dealing with lymphedema since I was 16 years old and been on different water pills um, and been just told, hey, wear these compression socks. We don't really know what's causing it. Um, it's not a heart condition. But as of this year, I've just been going through so many different things, uh, psoriasis of my of my hair and my face, mm-hmm. dried out, tightness in the neck, tightness in the jaw. Mm-hmm. It felt like I had some type of autoimmune issue because my body was just, you know, pain, you know, pain. There's tingling, yeah. there's numbness. So they told me to, I've not seen every doctor probably known to man at this point, uh, but they told me to go to a chiropractor because they said that my nerves, because I've worked on my feet for 12 plus years in retail in a stressful environment, okay. to go to a chiropractor because my nerves are, something is pressing on my nerves and yeah. it's causing nerve damage and it's there's no circulation there's no blood getting to uh the neck and the, so, and the so skin do you have a, a pencil pencil and paper handy yes I okay do. so write this down all right number one um in order to, the, the fact that you have this inflammatory condition through your whole gi tract tell, tells me that um your body has been depleted for a very, very long time, and now it's finally showing up as an inflammatory condition. Um, licor- licorice uh, extract is a really good remedy for gastritis, not the candy, but as a uh, supplement. So you want to get that for sure. The other thing is like you need the uh, something called chlor- uh, raw wheatgrass juice powder. Um, I would start taking that. It's a great thing to support um, the internal skin. Um, from your esophagus down to the stomach, that will actually soothe and give you relief. You, you can't at this point take apple cider vinegar or any type of acidifier fires because that's gonna aggravate things. So you're gonna have to uh, do the best you can. There's a couple foods that you wanna focus on. Cabbage uh, would be very, very good. You'll actually feel better with cabbage. There's something in cabbage that soothes the digestive tract. Um, and then you're gonna have to do intermittent fasting and then you're gonna have to do ketosis, healthy ketosis, but you're gonna have to I probably have smaller meals and probably do just three meals no snacking and then try to do two meals no snacking and maybe eventually just one meal because you have to heal this uh, the stomach it's going to take months months but it's going to happen over time then once it's healed once it's healed then you add the acid in there the apple cider vinegar and the um, betaine hydrochloride I have videos on that so that's what you need to do and then as far as your neck goes the reason why it's all stiff is because the digestive the digestive problem and congestion that you have because the food's not digesting fully because it's not working, it's going to refer these two nerves up to your neck. So watch my video on, I think it's gallbladder flushing and things where you can manually massage the organs down here and your neck will feel really loose. It's not that your neck is out of place. It's that you just, the digestion is causing the tight neck. That's what it's coming from. So watch some more videos on that. I have a lot more data. Thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Okay, good. So we need to answer this question. We got uh, we had Connie say that you answered this already in one of your earlier videos. Dang. So, but uh, we had a lot of people. Now, did you say? I thought you said what vitamin, or did you say what? What nutrient deficiency? Okay. So some people are saying C, Bs, mm-hmm. one or two or twelve. D. Then we had calcium, and then we had some people who were pretty certain on the copper. Hmm. Mm. Drum roll. The answer is copper. Ah. Copper deficiency. Okay. So start chewing on pennies. And uh, no, no. And do you know what has a high amount of copper, Karen? Maybe no. I should, maybe should we wait till the end to tell people? No, let's just tell them. No, we have more things. Mushrooms. Wow. Mushroom is the greatest thing for copper uh, in addition to uh, seafood. Now I have a question. What if you're like 40 something years old and you have sway back and you've had it a better part yeah, of your life? Good luck on that one. So I don't think you're going to no... be able to correct that. It's already too far swayed. Um, what, you, what we're <laughs> talking about is to prevent it when you uh, have a growing baby and you're going to get pregnant. That's the best time to fix these things or prevent them. 
Not fixed in. So if you are out there and you have sway back. You can take uh, copper supplements, but make sure they're food-based and see if you can improve it a little bit. I, I don't know how much you can improve it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, well, that's the answer to that, but we have two more questions. Yes, we do. And up these later are the really show. important. Wait very, you, very. Yeah, wait till, you, wait till you see this next one we're going to give you. I'm not going to even, I can't even withhold myself. I mean, it's so exciting to I'm tell you. Help. Don't say anything. Okay. Till later okay. in the show. Okay, I have a few questions here from social media, though. Go ahead. Is mayo keto friendly? It really depends on what kind of mayo you're talking about. There's some mayos, like Trader Joe's has a version, Health Food Store has a version. I don't know. It's. It's with uh, really. Paris Teeter has a version. Yeah, but you don't want the soy oil. Right. You don't want canola. Right. You want, um, there, there's different, they have um, avocado. avocado oil. Uh, there might be one for safflower oil, but mm -hmm. yeah, you want to just read the ingredients. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, what's the best handling for brain fog? What, what was that? I'm sorry, what was that? I was fogging out. Um, it's yeah. just basically keto and <laughs> intermittent <producer>. fasting. <laughs> keto and intermittent fasting handles mental, I mean, gives you mental clarity, What about Karen. B1? Well, that's an obvious no-brainer. Oh. No-brainer, no pun intended. No-brainer. So, no, B1, B1. <laughs> but here, here's the thing I want to bring up. Okay. If you have a symptom, I don't care what it is, don't even focus on that until you get the basic diet implemented. Mm. Healthy keto, intermittent fasting, then let's even talk about your symptoms because you're going to find these symptoms are going to go away. But yeah, you knew B1, nutritional yeast is hands down the best source of B1. But um, I, I do have something really cool coming out. Um, I'm gonna, it's something I created for myself, but I'll actually let other people Share it with too. the rest of the world. But it's basically, it's a, it's a really good blend of all the different key things that will surround B1, but it's all natural, so uh, food-based. It was real hard to create this, so I'm working on that. I can't wait to take it myself. And the manufacturing company that's helping me, they can't wait to take it. So um, I didn't even tell you about that, but it's coming down the pike. Okay. Well, yeah, it's good to not, not know good about to let those you things know. as the person over manufacturing. Right. I like a surprise. I just thought I'd tell you now. Good. Well, I have one more question here. Yeah. Does keto lower testosterone? In a, in a male body, see, here's what happens. Um, mm -hmm. Keto helps lower insulin. And if your insulin is too high... You're going to raise your testosterone if you're female, so you're going to get facial hair and a deep voice. It, it, back up. Okay. High, so high insulin. Right. You're going to get, um, it's going to actually increase your testosterone if you're female. Right. Facial hair. Right. Right through here. And a little mustache right here. Let me just get that. And then, um, and you'll get a deeper voice, Karen. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. So that's, but in a guy, in a male body, it lowers testosterone. This is like nature's sick joke on yeah. you. If you eat the sad diet, the sad, the standard American diet, this is what Mother Nature is going to do to Take you. Take a typical um, elderly cu couple. They, uh, the guy usually has very thin skin with a higher voice, and then the female has a deeper voice with a beard. Now, this <laughs> being very general, but I've seen that happen right. occasionally. All right, where am I going with that? Now you're going to take a call. Hey, James, you're from Florida. You had a question. Go ahead. Yes, hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Uh, I've been on keto for the last four months, and I've already reversed some conditions, such as GERD, which is great, um, down to about 12% body fat. Wow. I've always been someone who enjoys weightlifting um, as my form of exercise. And since I've lost a decent amount of weight, um, you know, I'm looking to increase my exercise intensity and recovery abilities. So um, I understand from your videos uh, that, you know, how growth, growth hormone is spiked from mm -hmm. quality sleeping, intermittent fasting, and HIT. So I just have two related questions. Uh, I was wondering how long does the spike of HGH stay in your system? For example, is there such a thing as a half-life? Mm -hmm. And does it drop steadily over the course of the day? And the follow-up question was, if I were looking to put in some sort of a weightlifting protocol, such as, you know, every other day, uh, is there a preferred way of you know, trying to spike those levels? Should I do it on my day that I'm going to work out, or should I do it on my off days, or does it not really matter? Okay, Thoughts? good question, Dave. Uh, I'm sorry, James. There's a lot of complexities and a lot of variables when you're dealing with growth hormone because it's kind of a delayed. So if, let's say you work out um, now, okay? You're going to get a spike you may not get a spike in growth hormone right away,
but you're actually creating this adrenaline rush. Cortisol may even increase, but the growth hormone will spike uh, in the next, like, you know, hours. It could happen hours or even when you're sleeping at night, so you get this huge spike. Because that's where growth hormone does its work, um, at night. And so you have, um, and I, I can't tell you like exactly when, what's going to happen, but here's some general rules. Um, if you do compound resistance training where you do high intensity, full body, I'm not talking about like this, just the spin bike getting your heart rate up, but using your whole body, like I think the best would be sprinting or the tire. You're lifting this tire up with your whole body and you're lifting it back and forth, high intensity across your, your yard and go back and you did that for 20 minutes, and you did that every other day, and you got enough sleep, and you got vitamin D or get sun, and or taking a nap during the day, and you're keeping your carbs low, you're gonna max out on this uh, growth hormone. You're gonna start getting younger and younger and younger. So these are all just kind of things that you wanna take in consideration. Be careful not to overtrain. Some people need to do the intermittent um, interval training every third day to let themselves fully recover. So it really go, go by your energy and how you feel. Uh, another key point to really spike it is to keep your sleep really good. So if you're not getting enough sleep, then take naps. Um, I personally found that when I do keto, I don't need as much sleep. I mean, I'm talking like I'm getting up like probably 4.30. But I love to take my power nap and then I'm feeling refreshed. Boy, do you. Yes. I can just kind of go out, bam, and then just wake right up and I'm like, I'm good to go. He'll just so. disappear. He'll be working away and then disappear. It just and works. Like six minutes later, he comes back and is. But in the morning, I'm very creative, so I'm I'm just kind of doing my creative stuff, and then. But anyway, the point is that's what I would do. Um, <laughs> what's the, what's the and point? the point is to keep your carbs really low, and then, um, kind of balance the sleep, the low stress. If you have any type of problems in your life, like try to. Just get rid of these, those things, so you're just really calm. On the days off, you go for long walks. All right, good. Thanks, James. All right, now we're going to take a question. Okay. If good. you have one. I have questions. Okay, first of all, I want to say Jane thought of you last week. She was driving through Kenosha. What? So Jane says hi. Jane, hey, yes, I'm from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Yeah, I, I haven't been back there in so many years, but one time, I, probably a couple years ago, I was in Madison for a seminar, and I drove back through the town, it was just so surreal because it was so small. I'm like, what the heck? Everything is like contracted. <laughs> and I go past my old house and it's like this tiny little little cottage house. I'm like, it used to be bigger, like the trees and everything. So it was, it was pretty weird. Okay. <clears throat> so um, thanks, Jane. Uh, so what protein powder do you recommend? I, I don't really recommend protein powders unless you know, if you want a meal replacement, I think pea protein is really good. But um, I prefer you doing food. Um, you don't want to take protein powders as a snack. Here's why. Um, when you're doing protein powders, you want to have the fat add, added to it. And protein powders are very low in fat. So that's going to spike insulin more than having a, a complete um, you know, meal. So if you're going to do protein powders, add some coconut oil or something like that. Okay. Or MCT. Is there one that, if someone was going to take a protein powder? Uh, of course, I'm going to recommend mine. Um, it's a chocolate pr protein powder. But um, right. if you want to know, yeah. Okay, fair enough. I mean, hey, they are asking you, so. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michael, love you, thinks that your wife should talk more and tell some oh, jokes. Oh, here, let me go to the next one. What was it? <laughs> I don't have any jokes, Michael. Yeah, give, me, give, us a, give us a joke here. What's your best joke that uh, I love to put you in the spot? Because it's like, because you probably had one and now you forgot about it. Yeah, I'm sure anything that I would say, someone would come back. Someone would come back and. Well, I will say, Karen is literally hilarious. You've seen her on the videos, the cooking videos. I just want to let you guys know, she's like that 24 7. So it's, it, I get entertainment and good looks. So, Aww. and. Yeah, so that's really great. And someone to wash your salad bowl. Someone every to day. wash my salad bowl. I appreciate that. Big purple salad bowl. Let's, I need to go to Jan from Michigan. Okay. Jan, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. I've had issues since I hemorrhaged after childbirth 36 mm. years ago. Wow. Sorry to I hear that. Take, I take thyroid hormone. 
since uh, about the last five years, and my depression is gone. Great. That has helped, but I still never feel well. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, you have, are, are you tired sometimes? All the time. Okay. All the time. He, do, you, do you ever take vitamin B1? No, I just ordered your cortisol supplement, and I think that has it in it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I would, in addition okay. to that, I would go out and get, um, of course, um, I have a product coming up, but I wouldn't wait for that. I would just go out and get some B1 in addition, like, do, like just, just do 100 milligram B1, and then take that right away, and then when you get my product, you can combine them, take them together. That'll just give you a little more B1. And the reason for B1 is that B1 is the spark plug that kicks in the motor inside your cells. It's called the mitochondria. It will give you energy immediately. I will um, promise you that. It'll just like make everything work, especially if you have fatigue from Hashimoto's. You're missing B1 the, because the mitochondria is dysfunctional. And I do, I'm going to have a video coming out on Hashimoto's real soon with uh, another, uh, another series of things to do, but I would just get some B1 and that should handle that and you'll feel much better. Thanks, Jan. All right, Karen, we are ready for the next question. Okay. Okay, you ready for this? It must be later in the show. It's later in the show, <laughs> and I got two more questions to ask. Okay. The first we'll one is going to go, what is, now we know, you already know the answer, but I'm going to give you a little tweak to this, okay? Okay. What's the best food to get your trace minerals that goes beyond sea kelp, okay? So everyone knows sea kelp is good. Everyone but let's say, knows. for example, Karen, yeah. you wanted a plan B. You want an additional food for your trace minerals. Mm. What food, what specific food? So what is the next best yes. behind sea kelp? What is the specific food that will give you your trace minerals in abundance? Mm. Okay, that's a good question. All right, folks. This is gonna be really important. So, and by the way, what's a trace mineral, Karen? Come on, they're the little tiny trace minerals that are needed in your body in trace amounts. Good. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> um, it's basically Whoa. minerals needed in smaller amounts. Can you give an example of one? No. Okay, zinc. iodine, selenium, zinc, yeah. Right. Okay, good. As compared to calcium, magnesium, right. potassium. potassium. Okay, good, Karen. Okay, thank All right, you. So, uh, this is like the freaking hot seat over here, man. Well, you're just oh, you're, you're supposed to be asking them you're questions. You're filled with answers. And, and it's my only opportunity to give you some edumacation. In, in the public eye. Well, yeah, well. Edumacation. Edumacation. If you start watching my videos, maybe I won't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, I, I mean, in the morning, he's very sweet. And he brings me a cup of, little cup of coffee in the morning. I'm not even awake. I'm like, and he's been up for an hour and a half. The first thing out of his mouth is... Have you ever heard of the islets so, of So, the mitochondria and the islets of linger hanging, and I'm like, hello. I'm just so into it, I just have to share the, I need share to the love. I just wait for like two sips. Okay, I'll remember okay. that tomorrow. Okay. All right, I need to go to um, Aisha from okay. Woodbridge. Okay. Are you Woodbridge, there? Woodbridge, that's close. Yeah. Aisha. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I just want to say, first of all, I'm such a big fan and I'm like almost uh, like freaking out that I'm even talking to you guys but thank you so much. <laughs> we're freaking out um, that we're talking to you. I just, oh you're so sweet. <laughs> thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, important questions for me and hopefully maybe someone else that could be helpful. I recently had two babies back to back 15 months apart. Um, I'm on a lot of weight unfortunately but you guys have your videos have been helping so so much and I appreciate it so much. Um, I've been noticing that, unfortunately, after having babies, and my little girl is snoring in my lap, so I'm so sorry if you hear I that. I hear her. That's, that's, <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> she snores so loud. Aww. But um, after putting on a lot of weight and then really getting serious about losing it and, you know, through the help of your, your, your videos, I've been trying keto and I've dropped weight and I felt so much better recently. But an ongoing issue that I'm having is that I'm finding that I'm just not going to the bathroom regularly, and it's almost concerning because I'll, you know, I try to follow Dr. Berg's recommendation of eating, you know, large salads and getting my vegetables in, 
but it'll be days at a time. And my sister suggested, okay, maybe you need a probiotic. So I'm taking a probiotic now, but it almost, I, sometimes I wake up and I feel so crampy because I'm like, obviously not going to the bathroom regularly. And I'm just wondering, is there something more that I should do? And I've heard about your supplements and um, I'm really just really into taking care of my body and kind of going through a cleanse now and just fixing everything I did wrong by having be ba- not by having babies, but, you know, by putting on a lot of weight after having babies. Mm-hmm. Okay. So do you have any recommendations there? Yeah, there's some, there's two things. One is a, a short-term solution to kind of get things going because people are concerned about taking probiotics or no uh, laxatives because they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be addicted. I'm like, yeah, but the, the problem, the danger of having constipation far outweighs any danger of taking a, a laxative. So this is what I would do if I were you. And this aligns with keto. Um, start taking an MCT oil. That it has a laxative effect. It'll loosen up things for you, and that will make it easier to go. And it'll actually kill two birds with one spo- stone because it's actually a, it'll turn an energy. It won't be stored as fat. So you take that. You can put in your coffee. If, if, not, not that you drink coffee. If you don't, that's fine. Just take that. That'll start to loosen things up. And that's kind of like your natural laxative as you correct the problem. And if you just had baby, uh, two babies back to back, your flora probably is, is off uh, and you're taking a probiotic. I would stay tuned probably in about a week from now. Uh, I have um, a type of um, probiotic that's very, very different. It's liquid. It's called Effective Microbes. And I did promote this a long time ago, but I'm bringing it back because a lot of people want it. But it's a different type. It's a non-dairy microbial probiotic flora. And it's really effective because it'll, you take a little before you go to bed and all night long it kind of grows. And then you have the most perfect bowel movement the next morning. So stay tuned for that um, in about a week. Now I'm gonna throw something in there too because um, I had that when I first was really doing keto and I was trying to eat tons and tons of salad and I would often crave salad. I would have a big bowl of arugula and then I would want more and I'd have a second big bowl and then I would get bloated and I wouldn't go to the bathroom. And it was really identified that I didn't have as much friendly bacteria like you just said. She may not have that, right? So I had to cut back on the arugula, on the raw leafy greens and I started to do more steamed veggies. Another thing I did in the last, even in the last, I would say eight or nine months, when I was running into that a little bit is I just, I did a bit more of a prolonged fast. If you said you were starting to do keto, I would really... Unless she's breastfeeding. Get, unless you're breastfeeding. If you're still breastfeeding, obviously no fasting. But if you're, if you're done breastfeeding, you know, you could do a fast. But I would start steaming some vegetables and not having as many raw leafy greens. Switch up your vegetables to um, squash. Uh, zucchini, zucchini sauteed, and, and zucchini. have a little less and see if that doesn't help you. There's two things. Either either you're going to increase your vegetables or decrease them to handle your bowel movements. It's going to be one or the other. <clears throat> and then and then you want to correct, get more bacteria in there because um, that's ultimately going to help you. Good. Okay. Good question. All right, Karen, are we ready for the answer? Well, I tell you, it was kind of radio silence here. I think you really stumped people. But, I know I did. Um, s- someone said kale, sea salt, parsley, shellfish. Um, you're talking about a food, right? Not a, a nutrient. Of two Correct. Things. A Karen. food. Right. One so nobody. Of food. I can't say and nobody. The answer knows. is oysters. Oh. Oysters. That's Oyster is like one of the best things you could take for copper, copper. zinc, zinc. Um, selenium, selenium, all the different uh, <laughs> trace minerals. Okay, good. Um, well, that's unfortunate. Well, okay, we can also do liver or sea kelp. How about that? You like sea kelp? Yeah, but you said sea kelp. We're looking for the backup to sea kelp. Oysters. What if, like, oysters Rockefeller, where they're baked? That's fine. You don't. You can't kill a, a lot of sauce. You can't kill a mineral. Okay, right. Okay. With the heat. Okay, we're eating more oysters. There you go. That's what we're going to have, fried oysters. Uh, okay, good. But it's good to know. That's a yes, good... Yes, very good tip, Karen. And guess what? Tip. We got another and question. there's another one coming, coming up, up in later about five in the minutes, show. five to ten. Stay tuned. It's Don't go anywhere. As if we're told to say that. Okay, good. So now we're, um, we're going to go to a social media question. Oh, Linda loves one? smoked oysters. Well, we've never tried a smoked oyster, have we? How do you put them in the cigar? 
Sorry, that was bad. Okay. That was really bad. So, um, do okay. you have a question? I had questions here. What is polymyelitis, and will keto help that? I mean, obviously, the person who wrote this question knows very well. I mean, poly means many, myo, muscle, itis, inflammation of. So, you have inflammation of the different parts of the muscle in the body. Okay. Um, so basically, it's a very nice breakdown. It's just a, it's it's a fancy way of saying fibromyalgia or, or I hurt all over. And and the bottom line is that 99% um, of the time you just do intermittent fasting and it all goes away. There's a couple other things you can do. Right. Check your gallbladder because the gallbladder, if it's congested, because you're eating the wrong food or heavy on the peanuts or whatever, that thing can cause pain referred all over the place, especially on the right side. So don't forget about the gallbladder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so the next question was about edema. So obviously a lot of inflammation. Oh yeah. Problems, right? Edema. That's so you, different. Oh, it's different than inflammation. Yeah. It is inflammation. But it's different. Well, okay. Talk about that. I was gonna. I was just gonna say, why don't you just list out? Because a lot of people ask about really specific. Symptoms, right? You or or really specific Latin words that the medical community has assigned to inflammation. Right. But but maybe you could do a video that's just like here are and all Latin? the freaking Latin I, inflammation. I, Latin was my worst subject, and conditions. I don't even know how I passed that. But but edema. I think I'm going to do one on edema. And okay. I if I haven't already done, I might. Sometimes I'll do a video, and then I realize I just already did that video. Like I know. A while ago. But yeah. here's the thing: edema. Oh my gosh, that, that's going to be an interesting video because there's multiple causes of that. One would be a severe B1 deficiency, which, by the way, um, that's like berry berry. Um, and it'll just. Berry berry what? That's the name of it, a B1 deficiency. Um, but here's, and that's because you're consuming too much white rice. But here's the thing or refined carbs or refined sugar. But here's the thing when you do keto and IF, that edema should be going away because it's the high carbs that are causing the fluid retention. If it's on the left side, it's the left side of the heart. If it's on the right side, it's more of the liver. But edema is pretty easy to deal with if you know, if you just get the basic keto and intermittent fasting in there. If it still doesn't work, you take a little B1 and bam, it's gone. Hmm. But I'm going to do a video on edema because there's other causes as well. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, good. Let's take a question. Let's take a question. Sarah, uh, are you there, Sarah? Ontario, Canada, right? Yes, I'm here. Great. Um, I am 33 years old. Mm -hmm. I have been doing keto for about a month now. Um, I am feeling a lot better, but I am finding that my weight is going up rather than going down. Okay. I have been intermittent fasting. I've been doing 16 and 8. I have been eating tons of vegetables. Um, I've been doing apple cider vinegar in the morning and at night. I'm getting pretty good sleep for having a 10-month-old. If you can hear him. I was going to say, that's a I very thought, interesting sound I thought you had a, in the background there. I thought you were doing deep sea diving and you had a. <laughs> 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 like, I don't know. I over here. What someday. is that <laughs> sound? She's so, sweating. So, Sarah, yeah. I have a question, Sarah. Sure. The question is <laughs> when you consume vegetables, do you feel really, really full and almost to the point where you're bloated? I'm having a lot of troubles eating a lot actually um yeah. i've been taking my blood ketones and i haven't been under 2.0 millimolars in a few weeks now and that was another thing is that i'm having a lot of issues like eating because i'm just not hungry mm -hmm. so okay. my answer is yes because i try and like force food in me because i know i need the nutrients so here's what you do no uh, let me just tell you what you do um here's what you do it's the vegetables that's what it is um and also here's the rule if you're not hungry don't eat but are you nursing well then she has to eat are you still nursing well i took her off oh no you are no i'm not i am not oh she's okay, not. Good. Okay. okay so just go longer that your body is actually burning your fat and then if you eat when you're not hungry your stomach is just like what are you doing i'm not i'm not hungry why are you doing this so I would just go longer, and that's one thing I would do. The second thing I would do is change the vegetables that you're consuming to um, maybe change it up to like, and I have a video on this, um, um, zucchini, squash, and have a smaller amount and some steamed uh, veg veggies instead of like the 7 to 10 cups. 
what's going to happen is that you're going to retain less fluid and you're going to lose more weight. It's really your digestive system. Um, I did create a video. No, you know what? I did not release this video. I, I'm going to release the video tomorrow for you especially. It's, the name of the video is um, when not to consume a lot of vegetables. Okay? Watch the video tomorrow and we will um, solve the problem. The mystery will be solved. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, now, Karen? Yes. Uh, were you paying attention? Uh, no, you were uh, I looking at, lost checking interest. your email. Okay, lost yeah. interest. Okay. Um, do you have a, a social media question or do you want me to ask another one? Well, I thought that um, you were going to ask another question. Because I have the, it's I have the final only question. Only nine minutes left. I have the question right now. This okay. is the last question of the day. Sure. Okay. Lay it on me. Okay. Sooner. Than this that. is true or false? Okay. Is it dangerous for your LDL, the bad cholesterol, to go up on a ketogenic diet? I know the answer. True or false? I'm not asking you right now. We're asking them. Well, usually you ask me. Okay. All right, as you guys okay. are answering right now, true or false, is it dangerous to have high levels of LDL, the bad cholesterol, go up on keto? Let us know right now while I go right to Angela from Vermont. You had a question, Angela, right? Yes. Great. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for all your information yeah. and your help, by the way. Oh, yeah. no, appreciate it. No problem. Okay, so my question, uh, well, kind of a question. I kind of want to do a little bit of a background here on me. I take all your supplements, the uh, electrolyte powder, estrogen balance, the blood sugar, the gallbladder, the D3 with K2, the yeast, and the adrenal cortisol support, trace mineral, and the digest. And I also take a um, uh, probiotic and magnesium. Okay. Um, also MCT and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So um, I had uh, trauma in my past. Um, lost my dad, and my brother within one and a half years of each other, and some other bad things that happened to me before I was 16. Mm -hmm. I've taken and I got memories back like five years ago. So I've just been recently dealing with it, and I'm fine with it now. Doing you know, doing all good and everything. And um, I got off all six medications that I was on because it was kind of causing a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. um, where you don't want to be on this earth, and that wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got up all that. I lost 65 pounds. Right. And, um, yeah, and I'm so much better now. Like, um, I mean, I feel my fibro is at least 50% better mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So I have fibromyalgia, and I have PTSD, and I feel that, you know, I feel pr like I've gone, gotten somewhere mm -hmm. with doing this, but I still have no energy, mm -hmm. like, Zilch. It okay. takes. I have to take something to help me with energy, you know, yeah. to even a little bit to like go do something. Okay. But I sleep better now, which was one of my biggest problems. I used to stay up all night. Now I get like seven to eight hours of sleep. My daughter has fiber also, so I'm kind of trying to help her as well. And um, I'll, I'll, as well as two aunts and two cousins have it. So it's kind of in my family, I think. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I intermittent fast. Um, I do two, one to two meals a day. And I also do a four-day fasting about once a month, and I've kind of done this in the last three months, this part. And I eat very, very, very clean, and Good. I take all your supplements. So you, I didn't know if you had any you other taking, suggestions. Are you taking the nutritional yeast? Yes. Okay, good. With the B1. Good. So take, um, take nine of those a day. Nine yeasts? Yep. And I want you okay. to... Okay, I just, to be honest with you, I just started that because I just got it in the mail, so I just started that yesterday. Okay, that's going to actually solve your energy problem. Um, okay. The, the other thing is that uh, on a very rare occasion, you may need um, a little bit specific, just be one, but I doubt it. I think I would just go with the nine and just give it a little bit of time. The other thing, too, is um, doing the massage, acupressure on the adrenal points. I have the tool. Um, the torture, I mean the treatment device right here, and you would do this on the neck, do it on your adrenals, points, and that will pull the stress out, especially if you have a history of stress. So I would combine that with the nutritional yeast. Make sure that your stomach is acidic, so maybe a little more apple cider vinegar. I think that will solve your problem. But that's really well done on the, the experience so far. Let us know next week if your energy doesn't explode. Okay? Thanks, Angela. All right, what do we what do we got on social okay, media? Okay, this was a um, this was a very good question. Most people said false. There were a couple of people said that a couple people 
said true. One guy here says true and false. So here's the thing. You're on keto. It will go up. Yeah, it's going to go up, but it's, it's not dangerous, uh, especially if you understand what LDL is. You know, it's been given a bad rap. It's usually at the crime scene, but it's not the criminal. LDL is there to deliver cholesterol, triglycerides, vitamin E, like antioxidants, to try to heal and patch up. It has other functions. It has functions to heal the arteries and things like that. So um, what happens is when, when you do keto, you switch your whole body into burning fat. And you got all these lipids that are increasing during this process. And people kind of like, they go to the doctor, and the doctor goes, oh my God, we got to lower that. They're not understanding that you're burning fat now. You're not, you're not no longer doing the glucose thing. And it's a natural thing for it to go up and then it comes down. If you understand what's happening, it's not going to be fearful. And then also, um, it will eventually come down. The videos that we have on this are out there. And so you just need to look them up because it's a really important point that people freak out. You, you don't have to freak out. Okay, especially right. if you're eating healthily and you're having the vegetables that I recommend. Okay? Yes. All right. So do we have uh, a question on social media? Yes, a lot of them. Just let me find you one. You just find one while I go to uh, uh, Fawaz from Kuwait. Okay, good. Hello? Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dr. Berg and Karen. How are you? Hi, great. Thank you for taking my call. Um, so I'm 28, almost 29, and um, a few years back, like three years, I went to have a haircut, and I started getting like pimples and bumps in my head, in my scalp. And um, I never got over it. Um, and of course, uh, at the same time, I went through a lot of um, emotional stress and other things like that are not related, but they seem to trigger it. Um, so anyhow, when I came across your videos, I learned a few things. And now I'm taking um, B1 and B5. Um, zinc and magne uh, not magnesium potassium mm -hmm. and also probiotics okay um and occasionally vitamin c so yeah good um but other than that like i've seen a couple of doctors and uh, some of them want to put me on accutane and some want to give me um antibiotics and i refuse mm -hmm. like i took some of them through injections and um, pills but then yeah. Uh, once the course was done and it wasn't useful, like the in, uh, infection came back, I just stopped and I refused to take any more. I got so, it. I have a question. Are you doing uh, keto like I'm recommending yet? I'm, I'm kind of getting into that and I'm doing uh, intermittent fasting. Okay. But keto, I haven't really researched the matter yet. Here's, so here's the thing that I want to mention. Uh, you have uh, inflammation in the follicles uh, in, in your hair in different part, places of your body possibly. Um, the way to get rid of that is to cut down glucose from the body, like uh, sugar. That's really what's uh, creating the problem. If you have hyperglycemia or hypo, you can actually have, you're more susceptible to inflammatory conditions and inflammation and your immune system um, is kind of be, it's a little paralyzed. So you might have these little um, areas of um, inflammatory um, or cyst or um, even like redness around the follicle. So that's like the first thing I would do. The most obvious is go on a healthy keto in addition to your intermittent fasting. That would be very, very helpful. The other thing too is to do a, a healthy cod liver oil, but the cod liver oil won't work unless you do the healthy keto first because uh, the cod liver oil is loaded with vitamin A and retinol is, is kind of a remedy that um, is good for what you have but you want it from a natural source. You don't want a synthetic retinol. Um, so that's why the cod liver oil. But again, get the healthy uh, basics in first and um, let us know your success. It's 12 o'clock. Karen, um, we just hit the top of the hour. Guys, yep. thank you so much for watching. Your yep. questions were great. Stay tuned for some cool videos. Now go to the video that I have and watch that one. Right, now and you can And the name is How to Eat, eat Whatever you want, you want, guys and lose your belly fat. For the lazy, lazy, lazy For, person. If, you, if you're a procrastinator and you're a professional <laughs> at it. 
All right. Okay, thanks. We'll see All you right. next Have week. Have a good one. See ya. Okay.